Hello and welcome to our Sunday service for the 16th of August. Again, however you are taking part today, whether on social media uh, or on our telephone broadcast service, a very warm welcome to you all. Those listening on the telephone may find it helpful to have a hymn book to hand and numbers for both CH3 and CH4 will be given. Jesus said, Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who lived before you were persecuted. Well, today we turn to praise, and our first hymn is from CH3, number 451, from CH4, number 497. Almighty Father of all things that be. to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we worship and adore you. Yours is the imagination that forged creation. Yours the holiness that stands above it. Yet you have revealed yourself within it, in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. We affirm that it is by you that we have come to be. It is to you that we owe all praise. Your kingdom enfolds all people of every age, every race, every colour and every tongue. And it is in your will that all find their peace. Father of us all, you care for each of your children and you know us all by name. As your family, we know that we are secure in your love. We worship you, we honour you, we adore you, we thank you for Jesus' sake, who taught us to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Son of David, she cried out, 
have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in a terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, Send her away. She is following us and making all this noise. Then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's true, sir, she answered, but even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. So Jesus answered her, You are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment her daughter was healed. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we share in the sins of the world and we confess our part in misusing the resources you have given to us. We have treated one another unfairly, exploited the weakest among us and have regarded wealth more highly than people. We have allowed hatred, fear and suspicion to divide us. Forgive us, we pray, for Jesus' sake. And we confess our own personal failings. Through thoughtlessness and prejudice, we have caused harm to others. We have consciously wronged others in what we have said or done or thought or in what we have failed to do, and we regret it. So forgive us, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Father, help us then to know the peace of your forgiving love. Give us, we pray, faith and courage to forgive and be forgiven, that we may live as your children in the world. Be now in my words and in our hearing. Amen. There is no getting away from it. Jesus told us plainly, those who follow him are going to have it tough. You must take up your cross, he said, if you are to follow me. But in doing so, you will be blessed. When his followers are persecuted, they will be blessed, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. They are blessed when they are harshly treated, for a great reward is kept for them in heaven just as with the prophets of old. What we don't expect, though, is for Jesus to be the one who meets out harsh treatment. Jesus, of course, had confined much of his teaching and preaching to his own home country, land occupied mainly by fellow Jews who shared his traditions and worshipped the same God, the God of Israel. He had been to Gentile territory before. In Gadara he had cast evil spirits out of a demon-possessed man and into a herd of pigs which then rushed over a cliff and perished in the sea. Well at that time he had been asked to leave their area and so he returned to the other side of the lake to Galilee. And now Jesus again returned to an area that was occupied by a large number of Gentile or non-Jewish people. Matthew tells us that Jesus went to the territory near Tyre. A Gentile woman, a Canaanite, came to see him requesting that he heal her daughter. Now her request didn't seem to be too difficult and it was nothing that Jesus hadn't done before. Jesus, after all, had raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, and that would have been pretty hard to keep quiet. So Jesus would have been well known, even amongst Canaanite areas, by reputation, for his works of healing and exorcism would have been well known in the land. And so this woman's request wasn't particularly unusual. 
And it would hardly seem to invite such a reply as was given to her by Jesus. Jesus said to her, It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Now, in our own day, when we're hypersensitive about race relations, well, today's reading may jar a little. But then Jesus is the standard to which those who follow him should, uh, should aspire. So does this mean that Jesus gives us permission to judge according to race or to treat dif people differently according to their background? Well, not at all. Our reading comes out of a particular context in the early church. It was at a time when the church was asking itself, what place should the Gentiles have amongst the people of God? Should they follow the Jewish law? Should they first convert to Judaism with all that that, that entails? Jesus, after all, was a Jew and his mission was to the people of Israel. His preaching was almost exclusively among Jewish communities. Even Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, preached first to the Jews and then afterwards to the Gentiles when he came to a new town. So to follow Jesus as a Gentile, well, that would be doubly challenging. It would be to meet opposition, not just from society around, but actually from many within the Christian Jewish community too. And that would require determination and faith and perseverance. Well, this was just what the Gentile woman displayed. And so Jesus praised her faith as he granted her request. Now, I'm not trying to sugarcoat Jesus' actions and his words as if he didn't mean them, but modern PC thoughts are incongruous here. They simply don't fit. We must take care about applying 21st century attitudes to the culture and time of Jesus of Nazareth. But what we can say is that Jesus praises determination and perseverance and stickability in faith wherever it is seen. We shouldn't be put off by Jesus' seemingly harsh words about dogs. And that was, after all, a, a common insult to non-Jewish people. But in this first part of the chapter that we're now looking at, Matthew has already made it infinitely clear where Jesus stood on these things. What makes a person right with God is not their tradition or history or race, not what they eat or what they refuse to eat, but rather it is the things that come out of a person's heart that show whether they're truly clean or unclean. So for Jesus, there were no pure and impure. There were no Gentile dogs. But Jesus lives in the real world, not the world as he is going to make it. And in the real world, we know that there is plenty of prejudice and rejection and obstacles to faith about. The faith that Jesus commends, the faith that, Jesus, that, that this woman showed, is a faith that's not easily discouraged by the challenges and the problems that we face in this world. It is a tenacious faith, a persevering faith. Because doing the right thing always requires determination. Speaking for the kingdom of God requires determination. Almost anything worthwhile requires determination. That's true of learning a new skill or training for a sporting event. Paul said, every athlete in training submits to strict discipline in order to be crowned with a wreath that will not last, but we do it for one that will last forever. That is why I run straight for the finish line. That is why I am like a boxer who does not waste his punches. I harden my body with blows and bring it under complete control to keep myself from being disqualified after having called others to the contest. Jesus is saying to this Canaanite woman, that she needs to be hard.
She needs to face challenges, as indeed every Gentile Christian would face challenges, as indeed every Christian will face challenges. But what is true in skill or sport is especially true in our life of faith. Only when we face a challenge in the strength of the faith that God grants us in Christ can we overcome. And we find that when truth and goodness shines, well then amazing things can happen. In a day of challenge and trouble, let us remember that our hands and our hearts are not empty. We still have wealth beyond anything our forebears could imagine. The love of God is challenging, although it is itself not complicated. Jesus died for us when we did not deserve it. And when we believe and trust in him, we find both belonging and fellowship to overcome any trouble, for God is with us. Now that doesn't mean anything will be easy. And our life will, like the Canaanite woman's, require courage and fortitude and tenacity in practice and faith. So persevere, keep going. We have the word of the promise and the calling of God in Christ Jesus. Days of trouble can again be days of reconciliation and renewal. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we have another chance to sing along, if you wish. The next hymn is John Bunyan's classic from CH3 number 443, from CH4 number 535, Who Would True Valor See? Let us pray to the God who is Lord of all the earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that all human beings are born into your family and that you have shown us that it is your will that we should live together in peace with mutual cooperation, understanding and respect. We thank you that when in our blindness and stupidity we ignored your decrees, and through our selfishness caused one another to be isolated, sad and afraid. You sent Jesus to show us your will for us and to release us from our sin. We thank you that he called all people into the fellowship of his church and gave us a vision of your kingdom in which there should be no distinctions of race or sex or wealth or class. May we and all your church work and pray for the day when all people will know themselves to be your children and recognise one another as your family through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, holy God, may all that encourages people in goodness, honesty, compassion and perseverance be blessed and grow. May all that encourages self-seeking, cruelty, prejudice and deceit 
wither and be exposed as the unsatisfying rubbish it is. We pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. We pray for all who suffer mental or emotional anguish and those who despair. We think of those affected by travel and other restrictions caused by the COVID pandemic, and especially those facing unemployment. We pray for those facing another day of pain, another day of hunger, another day of fear, in particular those who grieve. And we think today of those impacted by accident, remembering the train derailment at Stonehaven. Holy God, we thank you for your overarching love and your faithfulness which upholds us. We pray that in us your good news may continue to spread until the whole earth knows of your truth and love. Receive then these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final hymn today from CH3, number 591, and from CH4, number 645, I'm not ashamed to own my Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore.